My plan for Saturday is turn up, dump people on their heads, and give everybody a damn good show. Is the only thing in the world which mixes sport and theatre in that sense. This man has earned the right. Possibility for drastic things to go wrong. Hang on a minute. You've shaved the East Enders, yet you're not willing to suspend your disbelief for this. Getting set up fully for tonight. Independent professional wrestler of ten years now. Uh, head trainer at Dragon Pro Wrestling Academy, which also means I have the luxury of organising Dragon Pro Wrestling Showdown this Saturday live in Newport. You're that Mike Bird or you're that wrestler. They go, what are you doing in town? Olivia. There's those questions that come with it, but I think with any celebrity, small or super huge, you're going to have to be prepared to answer you know, what you perceive as daft questions. Yeah, I'm not exactly inconspicuous. I think that's one sort of the joys of being a, a beardy ginger prick. The Training Academy itself started uh, after what had been a thriving wrestling scene in the South Wales area had pretty much died on its ass, so there was nothing going on. Reluctantly, I took it upon myself to uh, try and start it up again and it doesn't seem to be doing too badly at the moment. Uh, apart from at the Wrestling Academy, I also work uh, fruit and veg at uh, Asda to help pay the bills. I met Mark at the place where I was helping out training. Mark's worked his bollocks off. He's got that physique that makes all the 12 year old girls tummy go a bit funny and I think he's the best in the country. I was like 13 years old or something and he just started training from there so he became my main trainer. He's uh, shown me most of what I know. I'm a little bit nervous, you know, wrestling near your hometown is always a bit more nerve wracking than most shows because you want to make an impression on the locals. This is uh, part of my training for Saturday, I just figured I'd try and up the cardio before the big match. Wrestling is always known for like insulting people's intelligence, trying to persuade people that what we're doing is a real sport and that it's not fixed. I think you should try and suspend their disbelief as opposed to trying to make them actually believe it. It might sound like the same thing, but there's a huge difference. They should be so in awe of the show and in awe of wrestling, they've forgotten whether it was fake or real or whatever, they just enjoyed it because they were so invested in it. When you see that look on their face of, Oh, you know, that actually did hurt. I think he actually hit him there. That's when you're suspending their disbelief. I think the big thing about the academy for me is to make it feel like a team, like a social club. Because at the end of the day, you're all there for the same reason. At the very base of it, you like wrestling. Get up, stand up. You have to be confident. You're getting it, that's good. But you, you get that, especially through someone like the Academy, by being through your mates and sort of being encouraged rather than just sort of slapped upside the back of the head and told to do it again. No, not so much for again. <laughs> There's a certain amount of that technique which can work. From low to high, aiming for the chest. Something like this. Oh. Only send it in, and you would expect it back. Wrestling, serious business. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. It's 
really good to see people as motivated as myself. A lot of people are quite surprised when you tell them there's a structure to a wrestling match because they think it's just two guys hitting each other on the head. Just from entering to the ring, that's when it all starts. Get the heel over, the bad guy, he'll shout at them, he'll scream at them, and he'll act like someone you should hate. Get your, the, the face over, get the good guy over, and get all the crowd cheering for him. He'll do some fancy stuff, he'll hit his shine, that's when the crowd are behind him. To hate the heel even more, boom, cheap cut off. And then you go from there to the bulk of the match, which is the beatdown. That face needs to build up as much sympathy as he can at that time. He needs to connect with the crowd, to reach out to the kids in the front row. You want to get people screaming your name just to give you a boost to try and have a comeback. Comeback is when oh, you think the face is back on top. And then you lead to a finish. So that's the basic structure that a lot of wrestlers use. For him to put out more cheers than us, Grant. I mean, this lady looks like she wants to come watch the wrestling. My son do actually. It's only seven fifty as well. Is it? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to stay there and try and cover the fact that your blood pouring inside of you is a bit hard. As the saying goes, shite happens. It's, it's, unfo it's an unfortunate reality. Hey Dan, how's it going? It's Mark. Um, yeah, I'm all right. I had a little bit of a cut on my ear in my match. Um, I think I might need to get it glued at the A&E. You wouldn't be able to give me a lift there, would you? You know what you're signing up for, you know, hitting the tickling contest. Yeah, I'd say he's pretty enough as it is. <laughs> 